everyone. Happy World's Fair Nano. It looks like everybody's been having a lot of fun today. When Michael asked me to come here and speak about the future of storytelling, I didn't feel equipped. I don't think any of us really know what's going to happen. All of these new social networks that are popping up, um, you know, the changes to media, who knows what's really gonna happen with the future of storytelling. So we're just gonna kind of explore it a little bit today. I've got my nifty clicker here. Let's see how this works. <clears throat> so I'll tell you a little bit about us first. We're a PR agency. We are built to work with high growth startups. We work with apps, brands, platforms. Some of our clients include Squarespace, uh, Cole Haan. Let's see if my clicker's working here. You can see some of them. Looking Glass, which is actually downstairs showing off their L3D Cube, managed by Q, Trello. So we've really been helping a lot of these companies tell their story. What is storytelling though right now? What is a good story? Right now the definition is storytelling is the conveying of events in words, sound or images, often by improvisation or embellishment. Stories or narratives have been shared in every culture as a means of entertainment, education, cultural preservation, and instilling moral values. All those areas in red, these are the problems that I have with the current definition of storytelling. Why? Well, there's a problem with truth and transparency here. Trust, transparency, it's kind of the storyteller is the boy who cried wolf. How do we know if we can trust our storytellers if they're always embellishing, if we can't hold them to truth, reliability, transparency, and, and trust? I'd like to propose a different type of a definition for storytelling. Storytelling is the art of sharing information efficiently and in a manner that's designed with the audience's preferences in mind. I think the audience is really important here. What are, what are the audience's preferences and how do we build a message that's gonna resonate with them? So what makes a story compelling? There's a couple classical components. There should be a main character. There should be someone who people feel like they have something in common with. Someone that they care about. A defined conflict or struggle, a defined time or setting, and a theme that actually grows out of the story so your audience can feel like they've learned it for themselves. A good story shouldn't have to tell you what the moral is. Storytelling should also be a co-creative process. Audiences don't passively receive a story from their teller, and tellers should always be aware of the audience's reaction and response, in real time if possible. The strongest stories have well-developed themes, engaging conflict, memorable characters, well-chosen settings, and a distinctive style. So how has social media changed storytelling? It's all about the now, now. Brands need to be telling stories more often and be able to react with agility. Now, just because they're able to react doesn't mean that they should always react. Uh, this is gonna be key, uh, we talk later. Interaction and, and a feeling of closeness. You can feel like you're close with the brands if you follow them on Snapchat. There's faces, shorter, faster content, and then live 24 access to, 24 seven access to stories about your brand, if an audience wants that. So as attention spans get shorter, so do our stories. Storytellers need to continue to edit themselves and anticipate and perhaps even co-produce new forms of message dissemination. Well, what does that mean? Good storytellers need to do more than just adapt. They must embrace new forms of communication. So here's our near future storytelling right now. This is what we get on Snapchat. This is Daily Mail, this is Cosmo. Um, you know, th this kind of content that we're being pushed on, on social media, especially Snapchat. Um, there's some more here. I think this is one of my favorite. We're all living in Beyonce's farts. This is actually a piece of content that was pushed to me yesterday. And yesterday, speaking of yesterday, NBC at the Olympics. So NBC wanted to make a big stand-in and go to the Olympics with really strong Snapchat content. Uh, they partnered with BuzzFeed to do this. And this actually came up in my feed yesterday. There were journalists on, on Twitter talking about this one on the right here. The opening ceremony was literally lit AF. This is NBC producing this content, you guys. It's lit on the left-hand side, and there was, I believe there was Kygo playing in the background. Um, when asked about why he was partnering with Snapchat um, and in why NBC Olympics really wanted to go big, he said, we're all thrilled to be working closely with Snapchat, extending the stories and excitement of the Rio Olympics to their large, dynamic, socially active audience. And who better to partner with to produce this content than BuzzFeed, perhaps the most creative producers in the social content space. While that may be true, what we saw here is, is not necessarily something that we want to, it, it's not NBC's mode of, of communication. Uh, it felt a little bit forced. Maybe like NBC was pandering to the Snapchat audience. As storytellers, we need to learn to tell cohesive stories across mediums, but they also need to be medium specific. So Pokemon Go, 
AR storytelling, I have no idea how storytellers are going to leverage AR in the future. I could come up with a couple ideas, but it'll be really exciting to see how it works. I think storytellers are going to be able to leverage platforms like AR and like we saw downstairs, VR. How are they going to work on Vive, Oculus, PlayStation VR? Um, these are platforms that we need to be thinking about as storytellers, not just uh, we need to be proactively thinking about and building content for. So storytelling for modern attention spans. Um, when Dickens wrote you know, novels, he wrote them for his attention span. Hemingway wrote them for his attention span. The guys who were making ad spots in the 50s made these 60 second ad spots for their attention span in the 70s for their attention span. Our attention spans are getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And um, the people who are creating content um, are at fault, we should say. Um, but it's because these are our attention spans. This is the media environment that we grew up within. So breaking through. We need to be sharply focused on making a single point fast. We can't try to educate our audience, but rather give them a reason to educate themselves. People need to see themselves, their lifestyle, re uh, represented in the content, in the ad, in the story. And brand and message must be consistent at every media and consumer touch point. If we can do all these things successfully or effectively, our messages can pass through this elaborate and sophisticated screening process. Connect with the person. The future of storytelling and, and brand PR. PR, storytelling, I guess you could separate these two. Um, but when putting this together, I was really thinking about the intersection of storytelling and PR. And it made me think of this book that I recently read. Uh, Trust Me, PR is Dead by Robert Phillips. The main idea of this book is that storytelling is being transformed by changes in society, driven mostly by social media. It examines transparency and how organizations need to make themselves transparent. And like it or not, they are becoming more transparent anyway. It examines trust, or rather the lack of trust in these people in power, and replaces them with trust in ordinary people. He argues, and, and I mostly agree, that what's next for PR is activist-driven, co-produced, citizen-centric, and society first, bringing purpose back into business. New measurement and accountability metrics are, are needed. And tomorrow's global corporations will ask bigger questions of themselves, put citizens before capital, and reconfigure their organizations as so social movements. Communicate through actions, not words. Uh, it sounds pretty simple. Do what you say. Communications must, must shed itself of an obsession with crafted message management and control. As a PR guy, this is hard to say, but we must replace this with radical honesty, radical transparency, and actions, not words. Our best case scenario is that storytelling is going to get a lot more transparent. It's going to be run this way because it has to be run this way. The crowd makes the rules in this model and brands serve the crowd. Corporate social responsibility programs are going to be something that storytellers uh, of today are going to look back with, uh, with a little bit of embarrassment. We don't need corporate social responsibility programs if we're doing what we say we're doing. And if we think about the, the pessimist view, well, storytellers are gonna use all the data that you share about yourselves against you. Um, it, I might sound a little bit like a conspiracy theorist in saying this, but imagine a year is 2045, there's a dedicated brand agent assigned to you. This agent's job is to anticipate which, which messages are gonna resonate with you, and based on your last 24 hours, your geolocation, anecdotal understanding of you that's been gathered through watching you and your purchase decisions, they're gonna figure out which pieces of content, which stories to push to you. Brands will become indistinguishable from media. Either way, there's going to be more stories told on more devices, and there's going to be more options when it comes to how you want to receive a message. Less written word, more video, and a new level of micro-content for a generation raised by content that reacts to them. Messages that learn their viewers. It's almost like mis mis excuse me, machine learning that feels personal. Branded, ever-evolving message bots fueled by AI that feel like your friends. I know, it's kind of scary. It's important to remember that the audience has a choice here. The audience has information, agency, and as brand storytellers, we have to accept that they have these choices or get new jobs. Media literacy is something that storytellers need to think about as well. Uh, the mental hygiene of the, uh, of the receivers of messages. As more and more stories are told across more and more mediums, through screens that we carry and screens that follow us, it's important that storytellers take the mental state and well-being of the audience into consideration throughout the message creation and dissemination process. I also wanted to talk a little bit about co-creation between mediums and storytellers. The mediums in which we tell stories, this, the next Snapchat of the world, will continue to change. But as storytellers, we must not be complacent. We have a role and a say in how these platforms evolve and a vote when it comes to where we tell our stories. A return to honesty. Storytellers in this model, 
this kind of you know, best case scenario, storytellers are agents of common good. They help brands see that we must balance profit with purpose. Storytellers can help organizations channel transparency and create a whole new culture of openness. I hope the next era of PR and storytelling is defined by intelligent accountability, where constructive dissent is encouraged internally and externally. In this model, brands, brand storytellers need to just shut up and listen. Brands need to create safe spaces to unite their employees and customers in order to spread the idea of democracy in business. What drove change in the past is not gonna continue to drive change today. Uh, if storytellers intend to affect change, they must think and behave like social activists. So here's a quote that I wanted to end with you guys. This is Peggy Noonan, this is 2011, um, right after we took down Osama bin Laden. Here's the fact of the age, people believe nothing. They think everything is spin and lies. The minute a government says A is true, half the people know A is a lie. And when people believe nothing, as we know, they will believe anything. Such as we faked the moon landing, there was a second gunman in Dallas, Dallas. the World Trade Center was blown up in a US Zionist conspiracy, Hitler grew old in Argentina. There will always be people who believe conspiracy theories, and with the internet, there will be more and more. They're impervious to evidence, but people who care about the truth need to be armed with evidence to refute them. So, some actionable takeaways. What can we do to get to, the, you know, to, get to this better future, the, the non-pessimist view? Do what you say. As a brand, just do what you say. Embrace and adapt the changing landscape. Ditch traditional message management. Engage in activism as a brand and as a storyteller. And if you don't know how to communi communicate on a platform, figure it out before you start. We want to you know, stay away from pandering to our audiences. Thank you guys so much.